I just wanted to ask you, obviously, uh, Mr. Blinken has arrived in London. No doubt the American message is going to be multilateralism is back. Uh, but is it that easy? Uh, certainly not. And I think you've seen that uh, already. You know, there was in the first hundred days, I think it was incumbent on the administration to say, we're listening to you. We actually want to hear your ideas. We're supporting NATO, uh, so forth and so on. Now they're into the harder issues of how you actually manage some of these relationships. And as you've seen, even in the first hundred days, there are some significant differences. Um, the United States is steadfastly against Nord Stream 2, uh, the gas pipeline that would uh, run out of Russia and uh, route around uh, Ukraine. Um, the Germans, for example, are still pushing for that. Uh, we have seen a reluctance in Europe to take a very hard line on China, uh, in part because of the trade implications. So we're back, the good news is we're back to sort of the more normal differences that you would expect to see between the United States and its European allies. So let's then talk about China. Uh, Mr. Blinken has given an interview on uh, American television where he said China is acting more repressively at home, more aggressively uh, outside. We all know that. He also said China wants to overturn the rules-based order. The big question is, what does America, does Biden's foreign policy team plan to do about that? And how is he going to have conversations with the G7 members about the issues that he, he considers uh, are, are pressing on the issue of China? Well, it's interesting. The phraseology that you mentioned, Robin, is what you heard from President Biden himself uh, mm. in his message to Congress uh, just a few nights ago, marking his 100th uh, day. Um, they have not yet put together their full range China policy. I don't think we're going to see that until the summer, but some elements are already clear. Um, while there is a, a lot more tension and some things that resemble the old Cold War, this is primarily a battle about technological supremacy. It is not one as much uh, of the kind of military confrontation that dominated the Cold War with Russia uh, after World War II. Uh, that means trying to understand how the United States and Europe would cooperate on technology, starting with 5G, but moving on to artificial intelligence, robotics, autonomous vehicles, and so forth, all areas where they are concerned about the Chinese domination of networks. Because who controls the network is probably more important in the next couple of years than who controls the sea lanes of commerce that we've traditionally worried about. Then there's the question of how hard do you push the Chinese on human rights, whether that's Hong Kong, whether that's the suppression of the Uyghurs, that's the how they're acting more repressively at home. And then finally, there is the question of how much you go invest in having a military presence in the Indo-Pacific and here we've seen the British for the first time begin to deploy out in that region as well.